Well, hello everybody and happy Saturday. This is Lisa Freeman from stampingwithlisa.com and I'm coming to you live on Facebook and it is Saturday. Um, I don't know what the date is. I think the 15th. Yep. January 15th. <laughs> I don't know why I always forget the date. <laughs> and I have got a um, gorgeous card for you tonight. We're making this one. I made both of these cards today and they're both using the brand new stamp set called Calming Camellia from the Celebration Catalog. And it is absolutely free, but you have to spend a $300, um, $300 order to get it. So it's, it's kind of free, but it's not free. <laughs> you get it free with a $300 order. So it's like, it's a hostess um, set, but you don't have to be a hostess. You can place the order for $300 yourself and um, you can get it absolutely free. And I was so excited to get it. I just couldn't wait because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I see something in my screen. Hold on. Let me see what that is. I think it is the light. I'll get it out of the way. Yep. That's what it was. All right. So it looks like we've got a good crowd tonight. Let me see who's on here. Hold on one second. And get my screen bigger. I'm in my pajamas tonight. I hope you guys are too. So we'll have a big pajama party. I pretty much stayed in my pajamas all day because <laughs> it was one of those days. It was so cold outside. It was like 30 something degrees the whole day and um, I did not want to go anywhere. So I stayed inside. It was cold and windy. Hey Angie. Hey Deborah. Hey Lois. Hey Sharon. Hey Linda. Oh, it's seven degrees Angie. Where are you? Where are you at? Why are the prettiest stamps always so much? Deborah says, I don't know. <laughs> it's free. But if you missed um, a couple videos ago, I did this one, which is using the same stamp set. And this is like one of my favorite cards I've ever made. I thought it was so pretty. And I couldn't wait to share it with you. So if you missed that video, go back and check it out. Oh, Angie, you're in Providence. Linda says she has a stamp set. Have you made anything with it? Lois says 31 here. With four inches of snow, oh my gosh, in Missouri, yikes. We don't have any snow. We did the other day. We did get snow for about a minute. Uh, well, actually, part of Virginia got a lot of snow, and actually I-95 was closed down for 24 hours. So that was that was a mess, but that was like a couple hours away from me. I'm on the East Coast, so we hardly ever get snow here. But this was the card from the other day that I did a video of, and it was so beautiful. I just had to play with the stamp set again. This was some of the um, samples, not really samples, but practice um, ones I did. So I just pl uh, played around with different colors. So this was Blushing Bride. This was, um, I think, Polished Pink. Um, let's see, that was Gorgeous Grape, Highland Heather, Misty Moonlight, um, Balmy Blue. This was a dirty Balmy Blue because I had stamped this one and then I didn't clean it and I just inked it up in Balmy Blue. So it's kind of a mix. That one is Highland Heather mixed with, I think that's Polished Pink. And that one is Coastal Cabana, I think. So those are just um, practice ones that I did just to see which colors I liked the best. And today's colors are actually, this is Misty Moonlight Paper, but I stamped it in Night of Navy. So it gave it like a darker look on there. The Misty Moonlight on Misty Moonlight was too light. So I did the darker color. So it works better like that. So this was soft succulent and I was going to do it in evening evergreen, but I couldn't find my evening evergreen pad. So I actually used shaded spruce and it came out perfect. But then when I um, colored it with the white ink, it actually made it like a little bit of blue undertone in there. So I thought that was actually really pretty. So these cards are basically the same exact card. I did them the same way, except this one, I didn't color the flowers in the background and this one I did. So this one has the white all in the background too on top of and on top. And this one I only did the circle part. And if you wanted to make this one, I'm not doing this one tonight. We're just doing the blue one, but they're almost exactly the same. Um, but this is a two and a quarter inch circle. This is a two and a half inch scallop circle from the circle layers dies. And this is the brand new satin ribbon from the spring mini. And it is absolutely beautiful. We used to have satin ribbon a long time ago in the catalog and it's so pretty and it's so soft and just really, um, I don't know, elegant looking. So I put that on here with it and then just did the happy birthday. And hopefully you can see all the sparkle on this one. I, I think you can see it on this one. 
because it really shows up well on the darker color. Oh, I'm missing comments. Hold on. Let's see. Delaware Beach, Robin. Hey, your sister, Deborah says your sister is it in an island and the wind chill is negative two. Oh my gosh. That is cold. Terry says, oh my, those are absolutely beautiful. So glad I bought that set. Well, oh, you, you bought it. You could, we could buy it if as a demonstrator before it was free. We get a, we get to pre-order stuff. So celebration hostess, the hostess sets were not available unless you bought it. So you could buy it ahead of time, but I got mine for free after January 4th. Um, Deborah says that card is beautiful. Laura, first time live. Yay. Welcome. Sharon says love both cards. Let me see. We have a lot of people on here tonight. Wow. Angie says gorgeous. Laura says very rich looking. That ribbon is pretty. Yep. Oh, Deborah says Long Island. <laughs> In Long Island, it's very cold. Hey, Peg. How you doing? All right. Hey, Danette. All right. So this is the inside of it, which is just stamped and then a happy birthday because I didn't put any words on the front. I didn't really have anywhere to put them. And notice the ribbon here. I'm going to show you how I did that ribbon. It is pretty easy. And I've done it before. So if you guys watch my videos all the time, you probably know what I did. But it's going to be a secret till I show you. So um, if you want to take a screenshot of those two before I take them away, and then I'm going to show you a couple other things. A few of you guys, um, oh, this is the stamp set too. Did I already show that to you? I can't remember. If you haven't found it yet, it is in the back of the celebration catalog. And it is right here free hostess set with a $300 order. So get a couple friends together and just order $300 and you can be the one to get it for free or you can place a $300 order by yourself. But either way, you can get it for free and it's only available during celebration. It won't be in any catalog, so sorry. Um, but that's it, it's so beautiful and it's got some really great words and stuff too. So beautiful set. All right, and then also, it is celebration time, so don't forget, um, for every $50 you purchase, you get a free gift from the celebration catalog. So hopefully you've gotten one of these by now. There's tons of free stuff in it, lots of pretty paper, stamp sets, all sorts of stuff. And um, this is one of my favorites too, the Simply Marvelous paper. And I also love this one. This is with the $100 order. You get all that paper and the stamp set for free. So that's a great deal. And then there's another one. This word set is free with a $100 order. So lots of great things in there. Oops, I just hit my microphone. All right, and um, don't forget celebration. I mean, the um, spring mini catalog is going on right now. Lots of great stuff in there. I'm not going to go through it because hopefully you already have. Um, but also I'm doing a thing for the rest of the month. Um, enter to win a free $50 gift certificate with every $50 you purchase. So every $50 that you spend with me um, and use my host code, which is right here, um, you get entered into the drawing to win a free $50 gift certificate from me. And also I do send out lots of gifts with the orders. So um, if your order is over 50, you get cards and designer paper, which I just changed. I was doing just cards for $50 order. Now I'm, I'm doing cards and um, designer paper both. And then if it's over $75, you get some gems, and over $100, you get some more stuff. So um, lots of goodies, but just make sure you use the host code. Unless your order's over $150, and then you get all the hostess benefits, so don't use the host code. Um, and also, if your order's over $100, why not get the starter kit for only $99? And during celebration, you get $125 in product, plus your choice of any two free stamp sets plus a free paper pumpkin kit and free shipping on that order. So lots of freebies this month and next month. So if you're thinking about joining or you want a great deal, that's almost $200 in product for um, 99 bucks and free shipping. All you have to do to join is go to my website, stampingwithlisa.com and click on join now at the top of my website. So all that, I feel like I'm talking myself to death or talking you guys to death. There's also another special. This one starts um, February 1st, unless you are a demonstrator. If you're a demonstrator, you can get it now. And if you sign up to be a demonstrator, you can also get this um, as part of your kit. So it's a new stamp set. It's called um, All Together. 
are here together, sorry. So that's the stamp set and it's like sign language. And you get these stamps and then it also has some paper, um, some white paper, six by six. And it, you get all these Stampin' Blends in all natural tones. So it comes in light, medium, medium light, medium deep, and deep. For these are skin tones. So you can use them for all the stamps that we have people in them or faces or you know anything like that. So now you have skin tone to make them whatever color you want. So if you're really pale or tan or you know whatever, um, you can do that. So that's the little flyer. So that will be available to everybody February 1st, but demonstrators and people who sign up this month can get it now. So done with that. All right, and then also last time I told you I would show you how to put a stamp set together because a lot of you guys said you have trouble with stickers. So I just grabbed this one off my shelf. I just got it and I haven't put it together yet. So here's all the rubber. And what I do is I just peel off the white pieces. So I'm just gonna do a couple so you don't have to sit here and watch like a long time, but I'm just going to do a couple of them just to show you how I do it. So let's just pick like three. All right, and then you're going to pick the matching stickers off. So there's one, and then let's see that other one is this one, and then we got a little one, this one. So these are all the animals. All right, so I'll start with the little one. So we've got the owl here. So what I do is I split it in half and take off half of it. And then I look at how it goes. So it's going to go just like this. So I lay down the part that has the paper still on it. And I line it up. And then once I get it lined up, then I press it down. So now it's down here, but this part is not stuck. So I just peel that right off and stick it down. And then it's perfectly set in there. So let's do it again with the bear. So you take off half, then you flip it over. So we're going to put it down where the paper still is, so I'm not going to touch the sticker down yet, and line it up, and then when you get it lined up on this side, lay down the rest of it, and then take that paper off. So that way, you normally get it perfect every single time. The only time I mess up is if I accidentally get it stuck, and I can't get it back up, but usually that that rarely happens. I mean, I hardly ever do that, but. All right, so this is the wolf. It's gonna go this way. So we're gonna put the paper side down first. Make sure it's good and lined up. And then put the rest down. So it's super easy. Um, and it always goes perfect. Pretty, I mean, I would say 99% of the time I get it perfectly straight on there. I'll do one more for you. Um, let me see, let's do some words. The words are always the hardest one. So this one goes here. All right, and if you already know how to put stamp sets together, you could have fast forward through this, that's okay. It won't hurt my feelings. All right, so we put the paper side down first and get it perfectly lined up and then hold it and put it down. So that way, if you take the whole sticker off, sticker paper off and you accidentally put it down, then you're stuck because that is some sticky paper. All right, so we did about half the stamp set in like two seconds. So that that's all you have to do. So hopefully that was a helpful tip for you. All right, so now we're gonna start the card. And let me read some comments real quick. Um, let's see, Shanna says, I wouldn't consider that stamp set until I saw your card. Oh, really? Oh my gosh, it's like my favorite one. And Danette says, I had not seen it done that way. We'll give it a try. Thank you for showing that to us. Oh yeah, Deborah says you can't for fast forward through live. Well, if you're watching the replay, you can fast forward. <laughs> Although I hope you guys won't fast forward through my videos. <laughs> all right, so all you need for the card we're making tonight, and if you just joined late, this is the card we're making. And I hope you can see that sparkle. Can you guys see it? If I tilt it. Usually it'll show up pretty good on dark paper. Hopefully it's on there. Let me get it in the light more. I can see it a little bit, especially right there on the smaller piece. So pretty. All right, so that's what we're making. And we need the five and a half by eight and a half white, five and a quarter by four misty moonlight. Um, this one is approximately two and a half by three and three quarters white scalloped contour dye. 
and then another little piece of two by two and a half Misty Moonlight. So that's all you need. And some of this white crinkled seam binding ribbon. That's where I got my ribbon from. Even though it doesn't look white, because I colored it. But you're gonna just be amazed at how easy that is. So, oh, let me put the card on there. So if you wanna take a screenshot of that, that's what you need for this card. Neat way to set up stamp sets. I put the label on the block. Oh, yeah, I've seen that done that way, too. Um, so pretty. Love the darkness. Thank you, Wanda. All right, let's get started. So this is really a pretty easy card. It's just a teeny bit time-consuming because you're coloring a little bit. So the first thing we need to oops, do is stamp on the big piece and the little piece. So we're not doing the white just yet. Let me get a piece of scrap paper. I got new scrap paper, so it's nice and clean. All right, we're going to start with Knight of Navy and our big stamp. You can stamp it upside down if you want to like that. Um, I'm just going to stamp it regular though and hopefully not shake my camera. All right, so we're going to have the card going this way. So I'm just going to stamp some going this way and then kind of make them go all different ways. And do one like this. And I'll just turn it all different ways and we'll have them going everywhere. And there we go. All right, so that looks pretty good. So there's our, our base, our background piece. And then I'm gonna also stamp one on here. And this one I have to try and get straight because I wanna get just this area where the flowers are. So hopefully this will come out pretty straight. I'm stamping on this tiny little piece. Tara, Terry says, I take the rubber stamp to the sticker, so opposite of how I do it. Yep. I've seen people do it all different ways, but that's just how I've always done it, so um, I think it's pretty easy. All right, so that looks pretty good. So that's our main piece. And then we're done with, oh, actually, yeah, we're done with the Night of Navy. Um, we're going to do the inside of the card too real quick. So I'm going to put that away for a sec. And the inside I'm going to do in Misty Moonlight because on the white, the Night of Navy was too dark. See how it comes out like really dark on the white paper. So on the inside of the card, I'm just going to put it, I'll turn that over just in case it's still wet. I'm going to put one right on the, um, the edge here. So just ink it up and do it right here on the bottom. Okay. Hey, April, your first live. Well, welcome here. Um, we have a good crowd tonight. We have 26 people watching so far. All right, so that's it for the blue and the big stamp. Oops, I forgot the words. I got happy birthday. So let's put that in here and hopefully I'll get that straight. Perfect, love it, love it. So that's the inside of the card. All right, so now what we're going to do is color. And I've done cards like this before. So I've done several videos with the whitewashing technique. And I love this technique. Usually I emboss the, um, the card first, and then I use like a water brush and the white craft paint, or the white craft pad, I mean. And, um, but I have done it this way before too. So you need a blender pen, and we get these three in a pack for I don't know how much. I think they're around... I don't know, 10 or $11. And then the white craft pad, which is in the big catalog. So you can either use the lid and squirt some, oh, I have a dimensional piece in there. <laughs> I swear these things end up everywhere. I've got them all over my house, including the bathroom. And there was one in the shower today. <laughs> they just get everywhere. They get stuck to the bottom of your foot. So you can either squirt some re-inker in here or you can take your block, which is what I like to do, and just kind of squish it on the pad and get some ink on here. So I like to do that and just get a bunch of ink on there. And then I've seen some people actually stick the um, pin like right in the pad, like right on the corner. You can do that too, but I just don't like to stick stuff in my pad because there is actually glycerin in here and I don't want to get that in my pad. So, All right, so I'm going to start with the small one. So you just take some ink off of here and you're just going to color 
and it will dry a lot lighter than it is when you put it on there. So um, hopefully you can see this really clearly. So you might even have to put um, more, a little bit more, or put it on a little bit thicker than you think because it does dry really a lot lighter. So just go all around each one. And then when you get in this darker area here, just kind of go over that really light because you want to have a little bit of darkness in there too. All right, so there you go. And it's going to dry in just a minute and you'll see how gorgeous it is. And it just is like, this is a wow card. So you should save this for like your really good friends. Don't give this to like just anybody because this is somebody who will cherish this card and say, oh my gosh, you spent so much time making this card. It's so beautiful, because it is. <laughs> I sent a picture to one of my downline and my friends, Beth, and she said, oh my gosh, she said, that's like absolutely beautiful. And I said, well, thank you so much, because I always like to show it to somebody before I do a video, just to make sure that they like it. I mean, I don't think anybody would ever say, oh, that's an ugly card, don't do that one. But I always like to get a second opinion because sometimes I love a card and then I'm always afraid somebody's not going to like it. Well, I'm sure somebody won't like it, but hopefully most of you guys will like it or love it. I just think it is so beautiful. I love this whitewash technique. And I've seen a couple people do it with this stamp already. I first, I think the first one I ever did with was the Magnolia. And that was one of my favorites um, a couple years ago. And then I just did one not too long ago with, um, which one was it? The Blessings of Home stamp set that's in the Spring Mini. And that one I think I did emboss and used the, um, the water painter. All right, so we're almost done. And I like to take a little, wherever these light spots are on the leaves, I like to kind of go over that too. So you have a little bit of lightness in there too. All right, I think I'm almost done. It looks pretty good. So any of those leaves that are really light, you can kind of stick a little bit on there. So there you go. And that's put just a little bit there. All right, it's almost dry. You can kind of see where it's still a little bit wet. All right, so then... You don't need to do the whole entire thing because once we put this piece on here, it's going to cover a lot of it. So actually, I didn't do this part until I finished putting this together. So what I did for this part was I got my ribbon and I wrapped it around here like three times. So I put it down and then wrapped it around and kind of crisscrossed it a little bit and then bring it back over here. So it's three times all the way around and then cut it. And then, so you know how long it is. So that's how long you need. And then what I did was I balled it up in a ball. Oh, I forgot, we do need that big stamp again. All right, so then I took the um, Night of Navy or Misty Moonlight. I can't remember which one I used. I think it was, darn, I can't remember. Let's try Misty Moonlight and see if that one's dark enough. I just made this like a couple hours ago too. <laughs> but I can't remember which color I used. All right, so just ball it up in a ball and then just stamp on it. Yeah, I think it was Misty. Yeah, it was definitely this color. All right, so when you stamp all over it, it just kind of like tie dyes the ribbon and gives you some color all over it. So there you go. And I just stamp it until it kind of runs out of ink. And there you go. And it dries almost instantly. And then you have this really pretty color of ribbon that matches your cord. So now we have that. And it's so beautiful. So that's just a tip. You can do this with any color you want to for this ribbon. All right, so we're going to go back to this step again. So we're just going to wrap it around three times. And kind of crisscross it a little bit. All right, so when you get to this point, and I did it a little bit crooked, I need to put it, hold on. 
I need more sticking out on the other end. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so then when I got to this point, I wrapped it around through all three of them. So I took this piece, the one that was on top, oops, and just wrap it around all three and then tie a knot. And that'll gather them together. So now you got that, and I'm gonna tie it in a double knot in just a second, but I wanna make these spread out more because I wanna fan them a little bit. All right, so there we go. And then just tie this in a double knot so it won't come undone. And it just gives you this really pretty ribbon. I tried a bow on it, but the bow kind of took away from the, the flower. So I wanted just something really simple. So I just did this and I just tried it with different colors and it wasn't working. So I'm like, I'm just gonna match it to the stamp with the ink pad. So then trim this up and there you go. So you have this beautiful little bow right there. All right, so then we're gonna put this piece down with glue and I'm definitely missing comments. I'll now have to stop for a second. And then we'll color the other pieces. So put that down. Make sure you go underneath there. And just line it up with your stitch part. And let that sit for a second. All right, and that's gonna go on with dimensionals. Let me read a couple comments. All right, so let's see. Oh, we got a lot of people on here. Hey, Ricky, how you doing? Let's see, Angie says, as long as you are not yakking about it. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Beverly says, wow, nice. April says, hi, Lynn. <laughs> I guess you know her. <laughs> oh, Ricky says, hey, Lisa, what do you think about the cold? It's freezing outside. Sharon says, beautiful. Ricky says, I save all your cards you send out. Oh, you're so sweet. I think I have one of your cards from eight years ago. Oh, my gosh. Deborah says, love it, just singing. Angie says, love this technique. Everybody's loving it, loving it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Terry says, we'll definitely be playing with this tomorrow. Laura says, what a great technique. Hey, Karen, how you doing? All right, so we're gonna put this on with dimensionals. Got lots of my friends on here. All right, I love it when everybody joins me for a video. It's so much more fun than doing it by myself. And hopefully nobody's on here that minds my yakking. <laughs> and if you're new <laughs> and you missed all that, <laughs> somebody complained about my yakking one day. They left a comment on the uh, YouTube channel and said, I like the card, but he, uh, what did she say? I like your card, but I didn't like all your yakking or something. And I was like, wow. So that's what that's all about. All right, so we're putting this like right in the middle and it just looks so pretty. Is that upside down? No. Let's see. I think I like it better that way. All right, so now all we have to do is color just the pieces that are showing. So I'm gonna get my blender pen back out and we're just gonna color all these little pieces that are showing around the edge. And that will only take a few minutes. I probably should have done this ahead of time, but I know you guys like date night with Lisa, so you can just hang out with me while I color a minute. I made some pumpkin bread today, which was yummy. I like baking when it's cold outside because then when I finish and I take it out of the oven, I, I leave the oven door open so all the heat can just come out in the house and warm up. And I bought this new heater at Sam's the other day. It's like one of those, um, what do you call it, ceramic heaters. If you get too much ink, you can always just kind of rub it off with your finger. And um, I'm telling you what, that thing works good. I put it in my stamp room. I was toasty in there. And I like to just kind of blend that a little bit with my fingers. It's almost like makeup. Just take your finger and blend it in. I probably need to add a little bit more ink on here. And you want to make sure you have a pretty fresh um, blender pen because if you have one that's kind of dried out, like for some reason I'm thinking this other tip is better. Cause when I, yeah, this one's better. Because when I was doing it today, it was really juicy. And I think this one end is drier than the other one. 
All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit more ink on here. So just smush it back in there again. Get some more ink. Or I do have the refill. If you want to stick the refill on the top, on here or in the lid, you can do that. Um, I was just afraid that would give me like too much ink, and I like to have like not enough and go back and add more than have too much on there. Because if it's too much, you can't really take it off unless you kind of wipe it with your finger. But it's better if you um, don't have enough and then add more later. I tell you what, I think it's really hard to mess this stamp up because it's so beautiful on its own. You don't really have to do much to it. It's just gorgeous. And this is a good tip, tip too because... If you sit here coloring the whole entire thing and you do all that middle part, then you've just wasted all your time and ink. So it's easier if you wait till you put the front piece on and then do it. So then you don't waste time. And in case you missed my other one, this was the other one that I did today. The green one. And I love that one too. But I had to pick my favorite to do tonight since they're both almost the same. And I did like the blue one just a little bit better. It just, you know, blue and blue and pink and purple are my favorite colors. So I had to stick with that one. All right, we're almost done. We just got one more set. Anybody do anything fun today? Let me see. Oh, you missed the beginning. Karen says, love your giggles and great technique. Lynn says, just gorgeous. Terry says, cold here, so it was a great day to make chicken crack soup. What is chicken crack soup? Is that like um, taco soup? I have one like taco soup, and I put cream cheese in it. And I think somebody called that crack soup one time. I make crack candy, but I think I shared the recipe with you guys at Christmas. It's that white chocolate and peanut butter and marshmallows and Rice Krispies and peanuts that I give everybody at work. And all my customers get it too who come to class in December. I don't know why this blender pen seems like it's a little bit dry too. It was so juicy earlier. But it definitely is better if you have like almost a brand new one when you do this technique, because you don't want to have one that's kind of dry. Like this one, it seems like it's drying out just a little bit. I don't know why, because it is almost new. All right, so see how when it dries, it just comes out like so pretty. So that one's almost dry. This one's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna do that leaf right there. All right, and then you know what we have to do for this one is add some Wink of Stella. So the Wink of Stella just really made this card pop. So we're gonna put the back piece on it. And let me find my lid to this blender pen. Oh, here it is. All right, so we're gonna put the back piece on with green glue. All right, let's stick it down. And, oh, I have to make these um, gifts for some, you know, I'm, I'm the mentor at work, and I just got that crooked. So every month I have to make little gifts for my mentees. And um, so I was going to make, like, some snowman soup kind of thing, like with cocoa and little candy canes and maybe some kisses or something. But I was trying to think of a little, I don't want to put the snowman soup on it, but I wanted to just say something, like, really cute with it. Like, you know, hope this warms you up on a cold day or something you know but I can't think of anything like cute to say so I was trying to think of something today all right so there we go and then we're gonna do Swink Estella anybody got any like good tips or ideas that you can think of off the top of your head and we're gonna do Wink Estella so we're gonna hit it oh my gosh it's so beautiful I 
you guys can see that. It is like absolutely gorgeous. I'll hold it up. All right, so let me show you under the light. Can you see it? Let me see. Chicken soup with ranch dressing mix, cream cheese, cheddar cheese, and bacon. Oh my gosh, that sounds good. Can you see it? I tilt it. Let me see. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. I love it, love it. I think you can see it a little bit. Um, let me scroll back. Oh, Catherine stamped Valentine cards all day. Ricky, you like the green one better? Misty Moonlight Paper, Navy Ink. Yep. Oh, somebody said you missed the beginning. What colors cardstock? Ink. Yep. Uh, Misty Moonlight Paper, Navy Ink. Angie says, my cousin's seven-year-old son and four-year-old daughter came to see their grandma. Aw. And you got to open, oh, they got to open Santa gifts. That's cute. Hey, Kathy. Audrey says, I am in awe of how you continue to come up with gorgeous cards. I'm telling you what, some days it's a struggle because I, I didn't even start making this until like about three o'clock and I was starting to panic because I'm like, oh, I got to come up with an idea for my video tonight. What am I going to do? And then I made this one and I said, oh, I'm going to try a different color. So then I made this one and I just love them both. So I wanted to show you both of them, but I only have time to do one because I didn't want to make this like a super long video. Oh, Catherine, thank you. She says, stunning card. I wonder if that woman, woman here, you spanking Stella. <laughs> oh yeah, we said spank Stella tonight. She would have reported you for violating community standards. <laughs> You're so funny. Hey Barb, thank you. All right, so you guys love it, love it, love it. I wish you could see all the sparkle. It's just so pretty. I'm gonna have to get like some kind of spotlight or something. I have two big lights over my desk that are like, um, what do you call those, ot lights. But you just, I can see it, I can see it. Okay, hopefully you guys can see it because I can see it on the computer screen. It just is hitting the light perfect right now. Love it. All right, so which one do you like better, blue or green? Deborah says gorgeous. De Beverly says beautiful. Thanks for spanking Stella. <laughs> You guys are funny. I'm so glad you guys joined me tonight for date night with Lisa. And um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Oh, Ricky, you like the green one. You're the only one that likes the green one. Everybody else is saying blue. Sharon loves both. I love both, but I think I'm partial to the, the blue. I was going to do it in purple today. I was going to do purple. So if you do purple, I would do Highland Heather paper with Gorgeous Grape ink. So whatever color you choose, if you do green or purple or blue or whatever, um, you want to do like the one shade lighter paper with one shade darker ink. So like this one, Soft Succulent, use like ever, Evening Evergreen or the Shaded Spruce ink. And this one we use the Night of Navy ink with the Misty Moonlight. So you don't want to use the same paper and same color. Use darker ink on the lighter paper. So if you do purple, Highland Heather, Gorgeous Grape. If you do pink... I'd probably do like, um, I don't know, with the pink. I don't know what two colors would go pretty together. Maybe Blushing Bride and Polished Pink. And then like for peach color, you could do um, Pale Papaya and what goes with that? Or pale, Petal Pink Paper, Pale Papaya Ink. That would be a pretty one too. I'm going to try some different colors and see, see what um, how they come out. But I hope you liked this, and thanks for joining me. And you guys have an awesome uh, rest of your weekend. I'll be back Tuesday. Don't forget if you want to order anything, um, here's the host code starting today. This is the new one. Good till the end of the month. And don't forget for every $50 you order, you get entered into the drawing, and you get a free gift on top of your free celebration. And if you want to get this one, it's $300 order, and you get it for free. And thank you guys. Have a great weekend, and I'll be back Tuesday. Bye-bye.